India is the world's second largest wireless market and the latest 5G rollout is highly anticipated. It is expected to revolutionize sectors like telemedicines, education, sports and entertainment and is also considered essential for emerging technologies like self-driving cars and artificial intelligence. Indian telecom giant Reliance Jio was the largest bidder spending $11 billion on the upgraded technology. It battled it out with two other major players, Vodafone Idea and Bharti Airtel, and a new entrant, Adani Data Networks. Within next two, two to three years, there will be a significant coverage of 5G in the country. India is also anticipating increased sales of gadgets compatible with 5G. After 5G, the network speed will be faster and will boost our growth, but companies will have to reduce costs of phones to push sales. But amid border tensions with Beijing, the Indian government has tightened rules in a bid to stop Chinese suppliers like Huawei and ZTE selling equipment to Indian telecom companies. We do have a lot of uh, 5G players from other than China as well. The only question would be whether we'll get at the same uh, rates at which uh, we would get the Chinese equipment. But then uh, the challenge at present is that China is getting quite aggressive and uh, from security point of view, I think the government has taken the right decision. The 5G network setup has been slower in India than several key global markets. But data costs in India is among the cheapest in the world. Telecom operators are hoping they will be able to charge a premium for 5G benefits to make up for declining revenues. But given that only 7% of India's overall smartphone base is 5G enabled, higher pricing may add to the rollout speed challenges, particularly in rural belts and far-flung areas. Smita Sharma, TRT World, New Delhi. Well, for more on this, let's go to business strategy specialist Harish Bijou, who joins us now from Bengaluru. Welcome back to the program, Harish. An eye-watering $19 billion spent by India's tycoons on 5G spectrum. They obviously think there's a lot of money to be made here. How lucrative is 5G going to be once it's rolled out in India, do you think? Well, uh, it's not only eye-watering, but mouth-watering as well, because this is big money. Uh, literally, you know, 11 billion of the USD uh, comes from just one player, which is Reliance uh, Geo. And uh, I think the opportunities are big. Uh, it's all about speed. It's all about saying that India is on a fast track. We want to be on a faster track. And that faster track is going to happen through the telecom networks that are going to be laid out. And 5G is the backbone of it. And four players out there, I call it um, our own Java Wars. Uh, J is for Geo from Reliance. There's A for Airtel, which is an old player. Vodafone and Idea together, a combined, an old player. And then, of course, the new guy on the block, which is Adani, uh, with deep pockets and deep intent to create uh, coffee and Java and telecom wars in this company, in this country altogether. I like that, Java Wars. Now, India, as we know, is the world's second biggest mobile market after China. Do you think there's an appetite among Indians to sign up to 5G, even if it means buying a whole new smartphone that's 5G enabled? OK, India, uh, if you really look at the smartphone population, it's reasonably good at this point of time. But it needs to cascade and deepen by as much as 25%. And that's going to happen if there are going to be cheaper handsets available, uh, if there are going to be handsets which are going to bundle 5G together and give it to the customer. And I think bundling is going to be a great way a lot of the telcos are going to approach this game with. So a cheaper handset, bundling, and speed. I think, you know, that's a combination one can't beat uh, because, you know, the masses in India equally want speed as do the classes. The Modi government has credited itself with fostering competition in the telecom sector as part of a broader agenda of bringing down India's business costs and making services more mm -hmm. affordable for poorer residents. Has that drive been successful? Yes, I think that drive has been reasonably successful. I'm sure the government wants it to be even more successful. Because, you know, with 5G, it's going to be about speed. And this speed is going to have two ends of the businesses. At one end, it's the enterprise business, which is going to drive this nation. And at the other end, it's going to be the entertainment part of the business. Because this country watches a lot on its handphones, and it wants bandwidth, which is superior than what it is today. 
And therefore, I have a term which I call telecom escapism. Uh, the people of this country love entertainment, and on your telecom escapism, you want speed. And I think 5G is going to provide that, and a superior handset is most likely going to provide that. And uh, Harish, we know that in the past with uh, the auction of spectrums such as 2G, th there has been uh, some controversy around that, uh, allegations of, of corruption and mismanagement. Do you think that the auction of the 5G spectrum has uh, gone off without a hitch? Has it been successful? Yes, at this point of time, I think it's gone off reasonably clean and with the reasonable degree of transparency. Uh, but data is the new oil and oil is always oily. Uh, you know, so people will talk, but I think what's important is, it's extremely important uh, that transparency be respected. And I think the government has done well in providing transparency in this 5G auction. Okay, Harish Biju, we will have to leave it there, but we really appreciate your analysis as always. Thank you.